The next several videos are going to talk about web information gathering. So this is going to be important because a lot of the times we're going to be tasked with a web penetration test, or we might encounter a website on an external or internal penetration test. And being able to gather information and perform enumeration on those websites is super important. So what I'm going to show you throughout is how to gather some of the information passively that is out there. And then we'll talk about active methods that actually involve going out to the website and gathering information that way as well. So the first and most important thing, especially when it comes to websites or bug bounty hunting, et cetera, is that we need to identify what subdomains are out there. And you saw earlier when we were looking at Tesla, it had a scope of something like asterisk tesla.com. This asterisk is a wild card. This means that anything and everything is open to us in the scope, except it was out of scope in the subdomain range. Now we can utilize tools to our advantage to discover these subdomains. Why are subdomains important? Well, we might run into something that is like dev.tesla.com or we might run into a website that should have never been out there, right? Like the dev or like uh, testsite.tesla.com, for example, or you might find login forms. Another reason that it's so important is because if you just look at tesla.com, you're limiting yourself to one website where there could be potentially tons of websites on these subdomains. So we really, really need to hunt these and be certain that we're incorporating everything that we can when we're doing our assessments. So one great tool that I want to point out is a tool called Sublister. Now we need to install that. So let's type in apt install Sublister like this. Okay, and this will just take a second to get it all set up and we will utilize this tool to get these subdomains. Okay, now that it's set up, all we have to do is type in sublister, hit tab for autocomplete, hit enter, and it gives you the syntax. We can do a dash dash h for help or dash h for help. And all we really need here is a domain. So we can say dash d for tesla.com, and it's going to start searching for tesla.com. And don't worry about this error if you get the error. So it's looking through all these different search engines, similar to what the harvester was doing. But you're going to see that it's going to return quite a bit more. So we see Baidu, Yahoo, Google, it's going to go through all these and try to search. Now, while this is going on, I want to point out another way to do this. So let's go out to the web and let's go and load up another site called CRT.SH. So we say CRT.SH like this. It'll load up a website like so. Let me make this a little bigger for you. And we can do the wildcard ourselves. So you see the percentage is a wildcard. So we're just going to say percent.tesla.com. Now what we're doing is we're using certificate fingerprinting. Now we're going to go out and look for certificates that have been registered. And it's going to attempt to find those and tell us what's out there. So you can see that we can find energysupport.tesla.com, gridlogic.energy.tesla.com, and we would scroll through these and try to identify all the different ones, like SSO, single sign-on, that might be interesting. If I could find anything in here that's like vpn.tesla.com or dev.tesla.com, any sort of thing like that, I'm also interested in it. Uh, API toolbox could very well be interesting sso-dev.tesla.com. So these are the sort of things that we're after. And you see right now that we have different levels to domains. Like here you see that we have our subdomain, but what about a sub subdomain, like a fourth level of a domain? You see gridlogic.energy.tesla.com. So we can go deeper and deeper when it comes to these domains. And what Sublister is going to be doing right now is it's going to try to find just the sub subdomain. So it's going to look for third levels. It would not discover this gridlogic.energy.tesla.com without a little bit of finagling and looking through the help to figure out how to do that. So 
we can come to a site like crt.sh to see if we could find any additional subdomains within this. And we can utilize tools like sublister as well. So I'm going to let this finish. But in the next video, what I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you how to improve upon this process with some tools that have been written in Go that I think are fantastic. So I'm going to let this run. We're going to have part two of this video where we actually review the results and then we'll go from there. So I will see you over in the next video.